Questions? All right. So, yeah. Is your one page your the same thing as your query letter? Yeah, your one page is more of your one sheet synopsis. Your query letter is more this thing, your Hello Data. Okay. Um, though, as mentioned by Travis, um, usually whenever you're writing synopsis, particularly when you get to the one sheet, don't hold back. Don't make it sound too much like a movie trailer. Um, meaning, you want to go ahead and give the entire story when you're pitching it to the editor um, in your synopsis. And most of them, generally, I don't know, do they still do this? John, do they still do the whole one, three chapters and a synopsis thing? Is that what they're, yeah. So they're going to say three chapters and synopsis. Your synopsis is basically your one sheet. Um, keep your, your synopsis under two pages. Um, yeah. Is there a word count for those chapters? Just don't be dumb. <laughs> um, a lot of them will say 100 pages, uh, double spaced, um, is what they mean by that. But really, they're, remember, remember the piano metaphor? They can tell on page one, just like you can tell a bad pianist, they can tell a bad writer on page one, paragraph one. Um, and so they want to have a, a, a page to be able to tell, OK, is this a bad pianist? And if you aren't, that doesn't necessarily mean you can still hold a story. It just means that you can hold the prose. At that point, they want to read two or three chapters to get a feel for if you, they feel like you can hold the story, if you can carry it off. And so give them enough that they can do that, but don't overload them. If your chapters are like, um, if your chapters are like two pages long, honestly, if I were you, I would go and take ten of those and name them chapter one, <laughs> just for your, um, for your, your submissions. You know, put line breaks in between instead, um, and then get them a nice. Yeah, get them, get them, fifty or sixty pages is what I would shoot for for one of these. No more than a hundred. Yes. Do you have any advice when an editor asks you a question after you've pitched and you can't think of an answer? Uh, <laughs> better luck next time. <laughs> yeah, um, it happens to all of us. Uh, so. That's why you're getting a college degree, right? So you can learn to talk about things at length when you don't really know what the answer should be. <laughs> so this kind of took our whole time, didn't it? Um, but we'll, we'll do, let's do a few more questions here. So if you get through all this and you send them through three chapters and they read it, how often do they continue? Ms. Snark said that um, roughly and she was a literary agent. She said, anyone read this? I sent, sent people to look at it one year. Um, and I, I might be wrong, remember I'm wrong. So people online, you can correct me if I'm wrong. But it seemed like it broke down for her by tenths. Meaning, she get a thousand um, queries. Of a thousand queries, she'd ask for a hundred uh, sample chapters. Of the hundred sample chapters, she would ask for ten full manuscripts to read. And of those ten, she would pick one of them to represent. That might be too reductive. Um, of these thousand, half are going to be queries sent to an agent representing the wrong uh, material. Meaning, half of those are going to be, they're sending to Joshua a children's book um, when he doesn't do children's books, you know, like a picture book. Or they are sending to a mainstream literary um, um, agent or editor a science fiction novel or a high fantasy novel. Half the people historically have no idea what they're doing. Um, Leading Edge gets a little bit better uh, than that, don't you think? Is it or is it? We get we get mostly stuff that's sci-fi yeah. or fantasy. Whether it's good is yeah. a completely different yeah. question. Yeah, but um, but half of those they say for um, for literary agent for queries because queries are so easy to send off. Half of those have no idea what they're doing, okay? Um, of these thousand, uh, hundred sample chapters, you can toss away 75 of them after the first paragraph, I'd say. Um, just like if a hundred people sat down, like I said, to play piano for you, if they think they can play piano, you will be able to tell after five minutes which ones you would pay money good money to go see, and which ones you wouldn't. Okay? So, this is where, this hunt, getting here is where all that stuff I talked about, what is it, two, three weeks ago? All that stuff, that's how you get past this 100 um, hurdle. To get past this hurdle, 
do all of this. Or learn to write really good query letters. I'm horrible at them. Um, but it's basically your elevator pitch tweaked a little bit more to bring it like one step closer to this um, is your query. Um, but yeah, um, you can bypass that by meeting the editors or just write really good queries. Um, but get past this by doing that. Get past this by practicing a whole lot and being able to carry a plot. This is stuff, all the rest of the stuff I'm going to talk about in the class is that sort of stuff. Speaking of query letters, um, when you say, to, if you go and you meet an editor and they say, send this to me, or when you send a query letter and you know the editor's name, would, would it be better, do you think, to um, just send the letter with the editor's name, or if in the writing submissions they say, send it to No, nope, send the it to editor. the editor. If the editor asks for it, send it directly to the editor. In fact, one of the main reasons to do what I'm talking about here is to skip that. Because um, usually on the website they will list acquisitions editor for a lot of the big publishers. That just means put it in the stack. And any editor who walks by will and may end up reading it. You don't know which one. Um, sometimes there is an acquisitions editor whose dedicated job is to read the acquisition stuff and then pass it on to other editors to acquire. I think our Deseret both works that way. I think they have an acquisitions editor and a separate person who works on the book once they bought it. Am I right on that for Shadow Mountain? Yeah. Um, and some publishers work that way. Um, but if you've met one in person, they will tell you to send the acquisitions editor if that's what you're supposed to do. If they don't, you'll just pass the big hurdle and hurrah for you. One of the main reasons to do what we're talking about. You're just shaving off this one if you can by meeting them. Sometimes they'll accept the whole manuscript, but you often don't want to send the whole manuscript because once you send the whole manuscript, you're basically committing. Um, there's a kind of gentleman's gr agreement in publishing that if someone has the full manuscript, they get to consider it until they say yes or no um, and then reject it. That's slowly fading away and becoming not as much um, an issue, but they call it simultaneous submissions. Some editors are fine with it. Uh, but if they don't say anything, generally, one person can have the full manuscript at a time. Um, and that's just kind of the way, it's a, a gentleman's agreement that is not very favorable to the authors. Um, agents are allowed to send to as many people as they want. Yeah. Do they ever let you know, like, I'm not interested so you can send to other people? Or? Um, yes, they do. They should be sending you rejection letters if they're on the ball. If you don't hear from them um, in six months is usually what they say. Uh, so you can send them a postcard and say, hey, um, are you still considering this? Um, by the way, this is why you want to have more than one book. Um, a launcher set on Moshe's desk for 18 months. Um, yeah. So uh, let's say that you do send it to people, yeah. and you sell it, and you yeah. just send a postcard to the first guy saying, hey, by the way, this has been acquired. Yeah, as long as they both take simultaneous, then that'll so be So what's the problem? What's that? So if you can do that, what's the problem? The problem is that um, this is the story that they say is the reason to stay away from it. I don't know how viable it is, but remember, this is a very small community. They all have lunch with, with each other. They all know each other very well. If one of them says, hey, I just got this great submission. It's this and this and this. And the other one says, wow, I got that too. They could both just say, oh, this is person is not respecting the gentleman's agreement and both reject it. That's the classic story that they tell. I don't know how likely that is, but that's the story they tell. Um, and if you send it to both and they reject it, both, and they mention it to each other, you could be in real trouble. If they both like it, they're not going to really reject it because they both like it. They're both going to try and grab it. Um, but so it's a do at your own risk sort of thing. Um, I don't think it's as big of a deal as it once was. A lot of, like, Moshe takes, uh, takes simultaneous because he takes so long. Um, and so I wouldn't, if, if you're fine with that, then go ahead and do it. But know that this is kind of how the community is. Um, and it's, it's why, if someone gets, if you get to this stage after they've read the sample chapters, they're going to get to it faster, usually. It's when you do what I did and just send them the whole manuscript right out that you end up with the longer wait times because you really haven't passed. You know, you've skipped two and jumped right up there. 
Um, and that can kind of backfire on you. It can be good for you because then they have the whole manuscript. But I, as a new writer, didn't quite understand this whole, they can read it so well in three chapters. Um, but anyway, if you, honestly, if you, um, if you get to this stage, and let's say you've sent out your manuscript to, to 12 editors, let's say nine of them get back wanting sample chapters, um, or even full. So let's, say you, that, let's go that way. You've sent out sample chapters <coughs> to 12, and nine of them want the full. You probably have enough um, of an interest then to call one of the agents that you've met at the cons that you know and say, hey, I just sent this out. I've got nine people who want the full. Would you be interested in looking at it too? Because I may be in over my head here. Um, and almost always that agent will say, yeah, go ahead and send me the full. I'll look at it. Um, and they'll get to it pretty fast in that case. Does that make sense? That depends on if you want an agent or not. We'll have to do an entire um, day on agents. We also will have to do an entire day on self-publishing and contracts. So I hope that you don't mind that about half of this class is business-oriented sort of stuff. I tried to warn you. Um, but next week I will try to do a um, writing craft lecture um, rather, than, rather than this. I um, mean, we have hit... Um, we have hit outlining and we have hit characters, so I, I feel like I've, I've got some stuff for you. We'll try to do plot next time. So is it like a country club where they like you in, or if you're really good but they hate you, you won't get in? It can be, but I don't think it really happens that way. Um, famous people in, in the business who are famously jerks still get published as long as they sell. If they don't, they get dumped real fast. Yeah. Um, do the editors like make more money like the more the book sells, or how does yes. that work? Editors make more money based on how the books sell, usually. So they have good motivation for finding good books. All right, let's go ahead and break it here. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I am with group um, Wildcard, I think, which is group number four, I think. Let me find the name. Group three, 